Hey guys, my name is Mary Helen Montague and I'm a part of the SALT team here at East Street Youth and I just wanted to give you all a warm welcome to this week's youth group. I hope you guys are excited as I am and don't forget, no one belongs here more than you. What's up, everybody? Uh, we are so thankful that you all are here with us on a Sunday night youth group. My name is right here. It's Rush Beam, and I'm the director of youth ministries here at East Street Youth. And we are thrilled that you are here uh, with us. We have started the season of Lent. Uh, so look out this week. We got some cool videos that we're going to drop on Instagram where we're talking about some, um, some cool things that we're doing as a church that we as a student ministry are hopping on to. So if you watched worship from this morning, you've already heard about these things. We're going to be dropping some this 
week. So we're pumped about that. Uh, friends, before I jump into our talk tonight, uh, I just want, I want to pray for us. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Good and great God, we give you thanks for this season that we get to set aside during the year really to slow down and to listen, to ponder, to think about things fresh, to think about our own fragility, to think about these moments that are coming in your life that have changed our lives forever. God, this season of Lent, be with us as a student ministry, be with us as individuals, be with us as families as we walk these roads together. God, we love you. We give you thanks. Amen. So when you don't know how to do something, how to fix something, or how something works, what do you do? Ask a teacher? Ask your parents? Ask your friends? Ask someone you really know and trust? No, you go to the internet and ask some randos. But I'm not talking about creeps here. I hope. No, I mean the people of the internet. You know, those people who make how-to videos. Because chances are, if you're trying to figure out something, someone on the internet has already figured it out for you. Things like, how do I unsend a text? No. How do I do a winged eyeliner? How do I get rid of the zit? By Friday night. How do I get out of gym class? How do I screen cap Snapchat without getting caught? They'll never know. But then there are things in life that don't have an easy fix, that don't have a simple solution, that don't have a how-to video. Things like what to do when you have problems with family, or when it seems like you have no control in your life, or what to do when someone has done something to you. I mean, clearly, they gotta go. The truth is, there's a lot of life that doesn't have a solution you can just find online. So how do you know what to do when you don't know what to do? Friends, do you ever use emojis when you don't know what to say? <laughs> uh, these are big eyes, right? I use this one all the time. I use it when there's something that I want people to notice. And they're also there when kind of I have no idea what else to say, right? Does anybody else do that with emojis? How about praying hands, right? Okay, I get it. I'm a youth pastor. But this is what I use when I want people to know I'm praying for them. And that is the beauty of emojis. They help us talk about how we feel without having to use words, especially sometimes when we are shocked. Have you ever experienced shock before? That thing that happens when something catches you off guard, right? And, and it makes your life feel uncertain. Maybe you felt this way when you got the news that your parents were splitting up. Maybe a friend said something mean about you, somebody that you trusted. Maybe you felt this way when you got an injury at the beginning of a sports season. Unfortunately, that list, it could go on for a long time. And if you haven't experienced something like this, it will happen. And I'm not saying that to scare you. It's just the truth. Because these things happen and they happen out of nowhere. It's difficult for us to know how they'll make us feel, right? And because of that, it's difficult for us to know how we will respond. And sometimes we surprise ourselves by how well we handle these things, right? But sometimes we surprise ourselves by how much we fall apart. Sometimes we feel closer to God when stuff just rocks us. But other times we wonder where God is at all. Now, because we are all wired differently, we experience hurt and shock differently. But that doesn't change the fact that hurt hurts. And when life hurts, we all find ourselves wondering what to do next. And that's why we are doing this series. What to do when you don't know what to do. Because we all encounter these no word sort of emoji moments, right? And so did Joseph. Now, Joseph is one of the most famous people in the whole Bible. And Joseph had some serious family drama. 
He was his dad's favorite child, <clears throat> 13 brothers, and therefore given special treatment. And on top of that, he had a dream that his brothers and even his parents would bow down to him out of respect and honor. And because Joseph seemed to have a hard time picking up on these things called like social cues, he shared this dream with his family. Now, his brothers were A, not okay that he was his parents' favorite, right? And B, his brothers were also not okay that he shared this dream of him ruling over them one day. And how did they respond? Well, let's look at the Bible. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. And this is from Genesis 37. And that went from zero to sort of 100 pretty quick, right? Let's see how it keeps going. Now, here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. <laughs> oh, man. Now, despite his anger towards Joseph, one of his brothers actually had a conscience right there in the moment. It says, when Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Now, let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Let's throw him in the cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. Now, friends, thank goodness for Reuben. He convinced his brothers to throw Joseph into a well instead. And he even planned on coming back later to rescue Joseph. And the brothers actually listened to Reuben. And when Joseph approached, they ripped off his special coat that his father had given him, and they did throw him in the well. Now, if Joseph had a phone, I think about these things, right? This is when he would have texted his best friend. Uh, when your brother tears up your jacket and they throw you into a well. <laughs> but they're still not done with him. They notice a caravan of traders sort of approaching in the distance. Judah, another brother, suggests that they sell Joseph. After all, I mean, selling Joseph to a group of people who would most likely make him a slave is better than murdering him? Maybe, right? So that's exactly what they do. And then they dip Joseph's special coat into like, blood from a wild animal. They take it to their father and they tell him that Joseph was likely attacked and killed by an animal. Great cover story, I guess. The Bible says they took the ornate robe back to their father and said, hey, we found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. And that last line tells us everything we need to know about the situation. The brothers obviously knew that the coat belonged to Joseph. It was super fancy, right? And they brought it to their dad to let him know that they noticed the way he favored Joseph. And they were ticked off. They didn't call it Joseph's robe or our brother's robe. They said your son's robe. And what a bunch of jerks. And this is where uh, Joseph would have texted his best friend a second time. Uh, good news, uh, out of the well. Uh, bad news, they sold me, like actually sold. Praying hands emoji, right? Pray for me. <laughs> now, I'm being a little lighthearted with the texts and the emojis, right? But there was nothing lighthearted about this situation. We simply cannot imagine the fear, the despair, the uncertainty, the anger and hurt that he felt. felt. He was betrayed by his own flesh and blood. I mean, what would you even do if one of your siblings do this? Can you get yourself unsold, right? This was clearly a what to do when you don't know what to do kind of a moment. Now, our stories, friends, are different from Joseph's, but we will all experience some kind of pain like this. We'll all have scary or painful or dangerous moments that happen to just catch us off guard. We'll all have moments when life doesn't make sense and we don't have the words to process what's happening. And unfortunately for Joseph, he had more shocking moments coming in his futures. 
in his future. And, and Haley and I are going to talk about some of those, and we're going to look at those in the upcoming weeks. But I want to highlight right here five powerful words that come from this story. And while they don't keep him from getting thrown into a pit and they didn't keep him from getting sold, these five words literally made all of the difference and helped Joseph maybe more than anything else. The Lord was with Joseph. Friends, Joseph didn't have a lot going for him in the pit and even less afterwards. But when Joseph was in despair and wondering how will this situation turn out, he could rely on one single truth. God was with him. Now, this truth didn't change the reality of Joseph's situation, but it was better than being alone. This truth didn't mean that Joseph could see where the story was going, but he could see that he wasn't entirely dependent on himself to get out of this situation. The truth didn't mean that Joseph could easily deal with the things that happened to him. It didn't mean that he had a reason or an explanation for all the pain in his life, but he didn't have to figure out all of those things by himself. And friends, the same is true for you. When there's nothing you can do, God is with you. When life hands you shocking news and you don't know what to do, God is with you. Now, okay, honestly, we hear things like this all the time, right? God's with you. We hear it so often that these words lose their meaning. We don't feel them anymore. But if we think about it for a second, that, that God is, is, is with you, not in some sort of abstract way, but God is literally present near you, next to you every time you ever feel alone. When you and I can truly understand and embrace this truth, friends, it changes things. Our circumstances may not change. I mean, after all, Joseph wasn't immediately returned to his family but it changes our perspective on any given situation. And maybe more than anything, it gives us hope that we can keep going even when it feels like we can't. Knowing that God is with us may not change our circumstances, but it might just change us. It might give us just enough hope to keep going even in the midst of our hopeless situations. So what does that look like? I mean, there are no formulas or easy answers for getting out of hard times, but there are some things that we can do in the meantime. First, we can be real. And by this, I mean, feel your feelings. Everyone will go through tough times and pain. And throughout the Bible, people went through difficulties, friends. And there are many accounts of them being real and honest with God about their struggles. If we believe that God is with us, then we should know that God is more than okay with our honest questions, doubts, and even our fears. And friends, the second one is similar. Remind yourself, and honestly, friends, each other, that God is with you. I mean, here's the spoiler alert. Things didn't eventually work out for Joseph, uh, but we, or did, excuse me, eventually work out for Joseph after some other hard times. But we know that because we can read the whole story in the Bible. But when Joseph was in it, he didn't know how it would turn out, right? All he could do was face another day wondering how things would turn out. But he held on to the one thing that God was with him. And moments when life is toughest, that's when this reminder is most important, that God is with you. And friends, your story is still being written. Now, maybe when somebody shares a real life story with you, we could remind one another that, A, God is with them. But even if they don't believe in God, we could let them know that we are with them. And I know that when we show up, God will show up. Friends, our life will be full of moments when we don't know what to do. Many of these emoji no words moments. 
And in these moments, nobody wants to be alone. And it's important to know that when you don't know what to do, God is with you. And so are we. And so is your small group leader, and so are your friends, and so are your parents. It will give you hope when things feel hopeless to know this. It won't make the circumstances go away, but you will have something to count on. You will know, my friends, that you are not alone. My name is Mary and I'm going to be doing the announcements. So my first announcement is community groups are on Wednesdays at 7. Unless you are a 7th or 8th grade guy or a 12th grade girl, then you'll have them on Sundays at 7. And you can find the links to the Zooms in the Instagram bio or on the newsletter. And my second announcement is Discovery, which we have something super special planned for. So keep April 17th open and more information will come out on the newsletter or on Instagram, so keep your eyes open. What's up, y'all? If we have not met yet, my name is Haley Foscu, and I am on staff here with East Street Youth as the middle school lead. Right now, I just want to remind you of the Linton kit pickup drive through thing that we had last week with the children's ministry and the rest of the church, where you could come by the church and pick up a Linton kit that had these awesome cards in it. Um, and I'm going to talk about this card in just one minute. But if you haven't already picked those up, don't worry. You can still do it. They are outside of the church in the roundabout in the back parking lot. Or you can also find these cards on, in our Instagram bio. Um, this week, I want to challenge you to something and talk to you about this card. So this week, we are centering on and focusing on what it's like those first few minutes you wake up and those last few minutes before you go to sleep. Um, this week's card is called Bedside Table, and I want to challenge you to something this week. This week, as you find yourself taking a moment to talk to God, spend time with God, I want you to think of an image or a phrase or a verse or even just one word to focus and center on for five minutes. And as you center on it for five minutes, I want you to listen to what God is trying to tell you. So that is your challenge for this week. Go check out these awesome cards. They're in our Instagram bio. Um, and I actually think we're also going to send them out in our newsletter. So do that. And until then, we can't wait to see you next time.